Expectant parents, as well as parents of a newborn child, are usually excited about the possibilities for the future for their new child and family. But with this excitement, there is also the concern that something may compromise the health or development of their child. This is particularly a concern when the child is known or suspected of being infected with the Zika virus. Pediatricians and other pediatric healthcare providers must provide critical support to expectant or recent parents in this setting, but may wonder how best to do so. This brief video provides 10 key considerations that can help you do just that. Please keep in mind that information about Zika virus infection is rapidly changing. This advice is accurate as of March 2017. 1. Families may be very concerned. Parents who know or worry that their child was infected with Zika virus are likely to have many questions, concerns, and worries, and may also have a range of strong feelings including sadness, anger, and guilt. People who are struggling with these reactions may find it difficult to concentrate or make even simple decisions, but these families are generally faced with important and sometimes urgent decisions that may seem particularly overwhelming. These worries and concerns may lead some families to avoid following recommended screening, testing, evaluation, and monitoring, afraid that taking these steps may uncover confirmation of their fears or introduce new things that may be upsetting or worrisome. Experience has already shown that many infants of mothers who test positive for Zika virus during pregnancy are not being tested after birth. Your support is going to be important to help families follow through on medical advice. Two, there is a lot we don't know. There are a lot of unanswered questions and limited information about the range of outcomes associated with fetal Zika virus infection and it is particularly difficult to give precise and accurate predictions of risk for an individual family. This uncertainty makes it hard for healthcare providers to provide accurate anticipatory guidance or to answer critical questions to the satisfaction of families or even to the satisfaction of the healthcare team. When professionals don't know what to say, they often choose to say little or nothing, but saying nothing says a lot. It may make families think you're unaware of their concerns or uninterested, unwilling, or unable to be of support. It leaves expectant and recent parents alone to deal with their questions, concerns, and worries. Three, we are learning more about this virus all the time. New findings are coming out continuously in regards to Zika virus, how it is transmitted, and its effects, especially for infants. And while there is still much we don't yet know about Zika virus infection, there is much we do know about other viral agents that infect and damage the central nervous system of fetuses. This information may give us some important insights. Four, your support matters. Parents benefit a great deal from partnering with empathic and concerned healthcare providers who face the uncertainty together with them. While you may not know all the answers, just knowing that you are there to face the questions together as they arise and throughout their baby's childhood can be an enormous support to parents. Five, don't say everything will be okay. While it may be tempting to give blanket reassurance, this is often not helpful for overall adjustment and may undermine a patient-physician relationship built on trust. Unfortunately, there is no testing or evaluation that can be done shortly after birth that can rule out the possibility of the later appearance of significant developmental problems allow patients to own their feelings. If they feel worried, they are worried. Instead of telling them they shouldn't feel worried, help them figure out approaches to deal with their distress. Emphasize that you are here to help and support them when they have questions and need guidance on what to do. Six, do say, this is not your fault. Guilt on the part of parents is likely to be common and should be addressed explicitly. It is important to reassure parents of their lack of responsibility for causing the situation, even if you don't see any reason why they might feel responsible. Seven, focus on the positive steps. Providing too much information or predicting only the worst case scenario or offering an exaggerated risk is also not helpful. Try to be realistic in your assessment, but phrase things in terms of positive steps that parents can take to reduce the risk. For example, enrolling in early intervention can provide parents with skills to help promote their child's development to the extent possible. Supportive services do not need to be Zika-specific. 
There are a range of services available for families of children with suspected or confirmed developmental disabilities of other causes that may be helpful. Even though any parent in this context is likely to feel worried and at times overwhelmed, remind parents that help is there and they should take every opportunity to seek and accept support. Some of the infants who are most severely impacted may be particularly challenging to raise. They may cry inconsolably for weeks to months after birth, be difficult to feed, and otherwise be challenging to parent. This may be overwhelming to caregivers and lead them to further question their abilities as parents. They will need even more support than some other parents of children with disabilities. Eight, watch for later problems. Some infants exposed to Zika virus in utero have been born without any obvious birth defects but then have shown later onset issues such as slowed growth of the head and developmental delay. It will be critical for the child's primary care provider to follow these children through well child care visits and developmental screening to identify these late manifestations of Zika virus that we're still working to understand. Nine, guidance is out there. Part of the challenge of supporting families affected by Zika is not feeling sure of what the right next steps in management are. You don't need to memorize everything about Zika, just know where to find it. Updated guidance is available at www.cdc.gov forward slash Zika. The AAP also offers key information for pediatricians at www.aap.org forward slash Zika key. And 10, don't forget about your own well-being. It can be distressing to be with patients and families in distress and the level of uncertainty at this point of time related to Zika virus infection can make it even more difficult. Professional self-care is important. Use trusted resources such as the CDC website to get up-to-date information. Partner with other members of the healthcare team and community to help these families and don't try to do it all by yourself. And remember to seek assistance for yourself from colleagues and other professional and personal supports.